Um, Andrew Williams. Um, to the panel, while the panel's still here, um, regarding the Reserve Bank Act, which has been in its current format for something like 30 years, would the, would the panel agree unanimously that it is time for it to be reviewed and other mechanisms to be brought in? Uh, along the lines of the private members bill that the Right Honourable Winston Peters has in the House now. And if the panel, and if the panel does agree with that, what will you as eminent uh, people in your various professions be doing to put pressure on the government to allow that private members bill to, have, to, to go to a select committee and for it to be fully fleshed out rather than the, the government just bury it and once again an opportunity to overhaul the Reserve Bank will be lost? Yes to the first question and the second questions we can but try, but sometimes the phone's off the hook. Uh, again, working for a not-for-profit industry-owned organisation, I'm not sure I should have a political opinion on things, but um, you know, I think in times of crisis, which we are, we need to look at every option and consider things. So uh, if the old models aren't working and 30 years is a long time uh, not to review things properly, uh, I think it might be time to look at those things. Uh, I agree that in times like this, we should consider all the options. So uh, the logic of my, my argument is yes to the first question. I'm not sure about the second, how I can make a difference. We're all making a difference today. Um, we've unhinged the debate. So the debate, as we said before, it's now a political debate uh, as to whether we're going to do anything. And that's putting enormous pressure on the government and the Reserve Bank. So the more we debate it, the more airtime the subject gets. The more people look at countries like Switzerland and what Switzerland's done, the more you're going to have a real debate in the economy because people are losing jobs. And when they understand why they're losing them, then they'll be very focused about where they put their attention. I think New Zealand first is, be con is to be congratulated, A, for coming up with the idea, B, being lucky enough to get it drawn out of the ballot, and we will be doing all we can across the political spectrum to get support so it moves through to select committee and the issue is debated. Now, I think this is going to be our final question. Simon Wood. Are you watching this book passing here? Uh, what can I say? Uh, we try to respond to our constituents, but go back to my earlier question. And I, I need to get up to try and demonstrate this again. We're a narrow organization. We only have exporters and manufacturers in our membership. So when I ask the, when I ask the corner down here what you want, they tell me. I don't have to listen to the, to the other group. 
So I can be clear because of my constituency. The other organizations have mixed constituencies with a massive weighting to the domestic economy. So they are responding to their constituents. We somehow have got to carry the message that the medium term matters. And yes, we're living in a bit of a fool's paradise at the moment. And there's only really one, one end to that. Oh, well, my job is more focused on maintaining unity among unions than among employer groups. But uh, what I can say is that, you know, in conversations I've had with Catherine Beard, for instance, around the Guran Ruse papers and what's being developed in South Australia, there is a great deal of interest. Uh, so obviously, when it gets into a more political space and other things like that, there will be different um, options taken. But I just think we have to keep pressing. I think the really good thing that the EPMU has done is that it's called this meeting in a way that brings unions and manufacturers together. There's a great deal of interest, there's a great deal of momentum, we need to grow that and other people will come on board. Thank you. Um, I'm afraid that we're going to have to um, close up the questions um, now in order for us to take a break and have lunch. Um, if you have burning um, questions and you, and you really want to ask them, then I'm sure these guys will be around and you can accost them over the break and um, hassle them about it. Um, just before I hand you back to our National Secretary, um, I did um, want to thank you all for being here and thank you, thank this panel for the discussion. What one would normally do at a time like this is sort of summarise what everyone said one at a time, um, but in the spirit of we're trying to build a consensus here, I think there's two things I could say and you can um, yell at me if you don't agree, that we do have a crisis and that the dollar does matter. Would that be fair? John, no, don't, you, you nodded. <laughs> Three things matter for exporters. Exchange rate, exchange rate, and exchange rate. Um, and, and, and it matters for us too. Um, my role in the union is as the national industry organiser for manufacturing, and so I see up close every day um, what these redundancies are, are doing to um, our membership, and I see up to close every day what it's doing to our communities and what it's doing to businesses, and, I'm, and it's really it's a terrifying time. Do you know we've had 75 separate companies call us this year to tell us that they're having redundancies? 75! Do you know what that's like? It's not a, just a number, it's 75 companies, 75 people's dreams, 75 communities. It's, uh, I, I could go on, I won't, I'll have my own five minutes. I'm gonna um, pass you back to our National Secretary, Bill Newson. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Lloyd. That's great. Yeah.